Hey guys, what's up? Serena here from thriftdiving.com. Well, today's video, I just have to tell you, I'm super excited about because guess what we found at the thrift store? A flipping chair. Not a flipping chair, a foldable chair. <laughs> it's something crazy. You get this idea in your mind of what you want to find at the thrift store and you find it. So in this video, we are actually going to be restoring this baby to its glory. We're going to do some staining, some stripping, some sanding, all that good stuff. We're going to do it to this chair and we're not going to paint it. It's too valuable. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor. I'm so excited to be working with Audible. This is a company I've actually been a member of Audible for gosh, five years now since 2014. I am a nerd when it comes to audiobooks about productivity and business. I just soak it up like a sponge and you get to actually buy them. You're not just renting them or streaming them, you are buying them. Even if you cancel Audible, you will be able to keep all of your books. And so in today's video, you're gonna get to get, you're gonna get to get, you're gonna get a free 30 day trial of Audible. You just have to go to audible.com slash thrift diving, or you can text thrift diving to 500, 500 for a free trial. They actually have things like Audible Originals. So every month as a member, they give you two free selections. These are like audiobooks that you can't find anywhere else. They are exclusive to Audible. And as a member, you get two selections every single month. So I usually look forward to the beginning of the month to go in and see what kind of new stuff is there. But there's news, there's all kinds of things that you can listen to on Audible. So definitely check it out. And I'm gonna share with you the book that has been a lifesaver for me. It's called The 12 Week Year. This is by Brian P. Moran and Michael Lennington. And the reason why I love this book is because most people will take like a whole year to set a goal and say, hey, I'm gonna do a 12 month goal. Well, his philosophy, their philosophy is that we don't usually do our best work until the last part of the year. Well, this book is great because it actually says, you know what, let's just do away with the 12 months and let's do 12 weeks. And that means every week we are gonna be doing tasks that are gonna get us closer to our goals. And so with this 12 week year audiobook, I have actually paid off my student loans. <laughs> yes, just recently I have, improve my blog. I've lost weight. I've done so many things just by using this framework of the 12 week year. So if you want to download the 12 week year or any other audiobook, you can go to again, audible.com slash thrift diving, or you can text thrift diving to 500 500. So let's jump into the project right now, because this chair is going to look amazing. Look at this chair. It's beautiful. So while I'm gathering all the supplies, let me tell you why I was even looking for this chair and why it's so perfect. So behind the scenes, I've actually been working on a closet makeover. I haven't told you about it because I'm not done, but I literally took everything out of the closet, ripped down the shelves, everything, and removed this stubborn wallpaper. Guys, I hate wallpaper. And this closet makeover just affirms that wallpaper should be illegal. That's just my opinion. So one of the things I'm doing is starting a podcast. And so I would like to have a place in my closet to record because it has the best quality sound. And I wanted a nice, cute little chair to put in there that doesn't take up a lot of space. And what do you know, this chair is perfect. So I knew that stripping this down was going to be probably the best decision. And so all the materials that you can, that you'll use for stripping, you can find that down below. So I won't go through each of them, but I will say, make sure that you're using a stripper and you're doing this outside. You never want to strip inside. This is an environmentally friendly one. So it's safe to use inside, but generally I would just say strip outside, make sure you have chemical resistant gloves. And for all this gunk that you're pulling off, you are going to have to find a place to get rid of it. So if you've got an environmental uh, recycling agency, you know, location near in your county, definitely make sure you get rid of it and dispose of it properly. Now here you're seeing that I'm using a mud pan. This is generally used in drywall, but I found that it was perfect for scraping this stuff off and then just cleaning this knife off on the edge of the pan. So definitely use that. You can also use a box like a cardboard box or anything, but this stuff was nasty but very re rewarding. Tell me I'm not the only one who finds joy in stripping. <laughs> anyway, the back, it looks like this chair belonged to Cleo Johnson. And so I'm so thankful that Cleo donated it or someone in fa her family donated it. Now you see here, I'm still stripping the back. The part that was a little challenging 
are the legs. You see that they've got those grooves there. So whenever you're stripping anything that has little grooves, get a set of wire brushes. That's really the only way you're gonna get in there and get that gunk out. Also, knee pads, knee pads, knee pads. I can't tell you how beat up I felt the day after, not even the day after, by the end of the day, I felt like I'd run a marathon. Thank God I have three little boys who know how to massage their mommy because I got the best massage, back massage from my 13 year old. <laughs> but look at it, it's, it's really disgusting. So this is what you're gonna have. Again, make sure that you dispose of it properly. Now, whenever you're done stripping, you have to clean up that residue because otherwise you don't wanna leave that on there. It's not going to be a good project. So do your best, wipe it down. And one thing I have to tell you, any rags that you're using for this, whether it's something that has mineral spirits, a stain, make sure that you thoroughly dry those out outdoors before you toss them in the, in the trash. That is a fire hazard. All right, so moving on, I'm still cleaning this up a little bit, trying to get this gunk out of the grooves, and that can be very hard. Now, one thing I wanted to do with this chair is to kind of strip away the paint that was covering up the metal. That actually took a long time and my back was killing me when I was done. It was so horrible. But what I found that was helpful was just taking some, some sandpaper, maybe about 100 to 150, and wrapping it around something that you could get into the cracks with. And so you can see that it's shining by the time that I was done. All right, sanding. Orbital sander is definitely, uh, it, it can be your best friend, but it can, all, it can also hurt you. Let me tell you what I did right here. And let me tell you what I did wrong. This chair is curved and this sander is not curved. So you see that I'm not getting a really good connection to the back of that chair. I think this screwed me in the end because then I had to go back and try to fix what I had messed up. So be very careful when you're using a, an orbital sander, you will get something called pigtails. If you're moving too fast, which are these little round curly Q marks, and you won't see them when you're sanding, but you will see them when you put stain on. And that's exactly what happened with this chair. So I was actually kind of rushing through the sanding, even though I sped this up to double time. I did rush through because I am actually going to Brazil next week. No, not next week, Wednesday. <laughs> I'm going to Brazil and I needed to finish this project before I left. And so I sped up in some places where I shouldn't have, and then I ended up paying for it because I tried to get these scratches out and some of the discoloration, and it didn't go as well as I had planned. So just take your time whenever you're sanding. Don't do what I'm doing here and moving against the grain. Keep your hand going up and down and not sideways because it did hurt me in the end. So once I started to put some of this gel stain on here, which I really, really love using gel stain, it's easy to apply. And it, I think, in my opinion, it has left like the prettiest color. So always look for gel stains. Now, after doing a coat and doing one small section at a time, I took a clean towel and went back over it, wiping it off. Now, here's where you can't see this because you're not very close, but at the top, I did notice that there were some scratches along the top. So just be very careful. Now to avoid getting scratches on the bottom, I covered up that freshly stained part so that the dust wouldn't get on it. And then I just did another quick once over with some fine sandpaper to try to remove any scratches that might've been on that seat. Here's another thing, when you are staining, you have to be very careful of the adjacent areas. You see that I'm getting some stain on the back. That can happen. The thing is, you just have to make sure you clean it up right away. Don't let it dry because if you let it dry, it's gonna be harder for you to come back to remove that. You're gonna to have to sand it out. And then if you sand it and then try to go over it again, you might have a, a lighter spot. So just be very careful, be mindful of what you're doing and clean up any spills. Another thing I noticed too, is that when you're wearing gloves, the glove sometimes will transfer some of it to your project. So again, be very careful where you're touching. And if it's, if it's possible, just change your gloves often or maybe have like a clean towel in your hand and that's how you hold the project down or you know whatever you need to just to avoid getting those marks on the other parts. You see on the base here underneath where it says US, I had some stain there. So again, just you know be mindful of what you're doing. All right, so the next things was just to apply some stain to the legs. I couldn't really get into the cracks of those legs. So, you know, just be mindful of using the right tools, you know, maybe take a little toothbrush and try to push some of that stain into the cracks. 
all right, here's another part where I had a little bit of a problem. I didn't notice while I was putting the stain on, but guess who had a big old, you know, scratch on the back of the chair? I did. <laughs> and as I'm wiping away, you see that, that scratch there. It just looks like a big old wave. And I saw it and I thought, oh, Serena, another one. So I tried to sand that out. You'll see that the spot got a little bit lighter. I don't like to do this. After you put a coat on, going back and sanding over, that's just really not what you want to do. So when I covered it up, it was a little better, but you could still see it. At this point, nobody's going to see it because it's in my walk-in closet, except for the thousands of people who will watch this, who will watch this video. <laughs> but I'm okay with that. Lesson learned. All right, so once it dried for 24 hours, it was time to do some waxing. Now you see how I took a ball of wax and just stuck it in the middle of a of a piece of cloth, lint-free cloth. That's really how you want to wax furniture because what happens is that as you're rubbing it over the wood, you are releasing a little bit of that wax through the cloth. And it really helps to prevent you from over waxing. So do that, let it dry for a couple of minutes. The wax that I'm using, you can find the link down below to the materials list. And then taking a clean towel, you wanna to go over it. Now, here's another thing that I did wrong. I think this should be a video on how not to strip furniture because I did everything wrong. <laughs> but you'll see here up top that I was doing in circles. Don't go in circles. You'll see here that going back and forth really kind of buffs that wax. And on the left-hand side of this seat, it's very dull. That's the part that I did not buff. The part that I'm buffing, look at that shine. I mean, it looks amazing. When that cloth starts going over the wood nice and smooth, that means you've, you've buffed that area enough. It's time to move over to the next area. So this is what it looked like before. It was all beaten up, good condition in terms of the bones but that stain needed to go and I think this looks so much better. Now, is this chair perfect? It's not perfect. I would messed up in some areas, of course, but each project is an opportunity to learn what not to do next time. So don't beat yourself up if your project doesn't turn out right. Compare it and say, okay, well, maybe on this part, you know, this piece of wood looks a little too dark, but overall, it's a nice, beautiful piece of furniture. And that's what you need to do. You need to evaluate each project. Does it look better? Can I see the grain? Does it make me happy? This project hits all those check boxes. I love this chair and I am gonna be so happy putting this in my closet. So if you enjoyed this project, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Go down below, click the sponsor for Audible to get your free 30 day trial membership. And I will see you next video.